another beautiful morning. God is good. All the time, God is good. Oh, it's, uh, it's such an amazing thought to, to ponder of how big our God is, huh? Oh, and I always tell people, whenever you're in doubt, whenever you think that the uh, situation that uh, you're facing is really overwhelming, just look up. <laughs> Even it's morning, just look up and be reminded of what are the things that you cannot see. Amen? We have a powerful God, my dear friends. And we often forget. We often forget how big our God is. We often forget how powerful our God is. And it's good to be reminded by looking around, especially looking up. And uh, I guess that's the reason why that uh, nature is our second book, the second Bible. So this morning, I'll be talking about one of my favorite stories in the Bible, and I did not even realize that this could be my favorite story in the Bible. This is the story of, uh, of a king, King Jehoshaphat. I think you're familiar with King Jehoshaphat? Yeah, it's, it's good because I, when I go to some, some places, when I tell them, I'll be talking about King Jehoshaphat, and they said, Jehoshua who? <laughs> said Jehoshaphat. <laughs> so... Friends, before I go on and share what the Lord had, had put in my heart to share this morning, I'd like to invite you once again for a word of prayer. Shall we kneel? Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that we have just prayed, but uh, we could never pray enough. You deserve our praises, our thanksgiving, and you deserve our worship. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, knowing that we are nothing, but when we have you, we have everything. So Lord, I pray that you please set our minds and set our hearts and prepare us to receive what you would want us to receive today. We give you back all the praises, the glory, and the honor. Again, dear Father, I ask that you please hide me behind the shadow of your cross. Please move me out of the way that I will not be seen or be heard, but Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted. And please pour upon us a full measure of your spirit, for we ask this in the loving name of your son, Jesus, all your children say, Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you, please open it in 2 Chronicles chapter 17. 2 Chronicles chapter 17. If you're there, say amen. Okay. So 2 Chronicles chapter 17. It all started with, with a beautiful story here. Jehoshaphat was blessed. Why was he blessed? Because he was seeking God, seeking God with all of his heart. And he did all the reforms. And just imagine, friends, when you look at this, this whole scenario here, even his enemies are afraid of him. When you look at verses uh, 11 and 12, also some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver. And the Arabians brought him flocks. Friends, what's the business of your enemies bringing you gifts? because they don't want you to fight them. The fear of the Lord was upon all the lands. When they saw Jehoshaphat, they knew for a fact that God was a Jehoshaphat. Amen? And verse 12, And Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly, and he built Judah castles and cities of store. Friends, his gifts are overwhelmingly so many that he needs to have castles and cities of store to keep it in. That's how blessed he was. And, and when we look at his army, who loves here math? Who loves, okay, there are some brave souls here. Math, let's, let's do some, uh, some addition. There's no uh, multiplication or anything. It's just addition. So let's count Jehoshaphat's army. Verse 14, it says, Adna had 300,000. How many? So one of his captains, and Jehoanan, one of his captains had 280,000. What's the total? 580, okay. And Amasiah had 200,000. 780. And Eliada had 200,000. 980,000. And Jehoshaphat had 180,000. 1,160,000 men. Is this an army or what? 1,160,000. This is a huge army. And friends, 
who made his army grow like this? Amen. It was God. I love that verse in, in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. And this is the verse that I always take with me. Trust in the Lord with what? All thine heart. And? Lean not on thy own understanding. And those two lines are really powerful that sometimes we forget the last line. And it's, it seems like it's not as important as the first two. What's the last line? <laughs> Acknowledge him and he shall what? That is a very, very simple instruction. And you know what? The gospel is very simple. The gospel is really simple. In all your ways, what? Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. If you do not forget where all these blessings come from, you will be guided. You'll be, you'll be walking in a, in a straight, narrow, but a joyful path. Amen? Listen to this. Let's go to chapter 18. This is where the sad things begin to happen. Chapter 18. What does that say? Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in what? In abundance. It did not just say riches and honor, but in abundance. And he joined affinity with Ahab. He joined what? Affinity with Ahab. And what do you mean when he joined affinity? Made a what? And you know what they do, they do before? They let their sons and daughters marry one another. To what? To strengthen the alliance, to strengthen the forces. Jehoshaphat forgot that the one who strengthened his forces, his alliance, was not other kings, but the king of kings and the lord of lords. We often forget, and this is one thing about prosperity, and this is one thing about success. We often take God out of the equation when we achieve success. And thinking that we achieved it because of our own training, because of our own might, because of our own skills. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. The reason for this, I believe, that Jehoshaphat made the wrong choice is because he failed to acknowledge that it was God who gave him prosperity. It was God who instilled fear among, his, among the other kingdoms that are surrounding him. And he let his son marry their daughter Athaliah. And friends, who among you here does not know King Ahab? Everyone knows King Ahab. Huh? And some people say, wow, Ahab is very popular. I said, no, no, he's very notorious. He is the what? Most what? Wicked king. He was, the was, he was the most wicked king, and he was married to the most wicked queen. Perfect combination. And friends, if two wicked couple, the wicked power couple combines, don't you think that it's going to be obvious? Don't you think that Jehoshaphat would notice that they are living in wickedness? He would. Other people recognize this. Why would a king that God has, has given wisdom would not recognize it? But the question is, why did he join affinity with wickedness? In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Let us move on, friends. And now Ahab, when you look, I'll, I'll just summarize this. Now Ahab somehow tried to, to flatter or, or patronize <laughs> Jehoshaphat, and he said, you know what? If your army joins with my army, we would be unbeatable. And somehow, Jehoshaphat was thinking, yes, I have 1.16 million. Why should we not? And friends, so Ahab wanted to fight the kingdom of Syria because he has, Syria has a land that, he, that was taken from him and now he wanted it back. So, and Jehoshaphat somehow still has the fear of God in him. But before we go, let us inquire of God. He said, okay, I have prophets. <laughs> and when he presented his prophets, Jehoshaphat somehow noticed that this is not a prophet of God. These are all false prophets. <laughs> so he asked for the prophet of God. And the prophet of God came. And what did the prophet of God say? In verse 16, it says, chapter 18, verse 16. Then he said, Micaiah, I did see all the Israel scattered upon the mountains as a sheep that have no shepherd. This was the prophecy of the prophet. It means to say that the king would die. So the suggestion was, let all the men go back to their homes. That was the message of the prophet. And friends, the message of the prophet 
comes straight from whom? From God. And this is one thing, friends, that I do not really understood first. Who was the one who asked for the prophet of God? Jehoshaphat. And when you, you know the whole story already, they, they still went on in the battle. And I'm thinking, why would Jehoshaphat not listen to the prophecy that the prophet gave? He's the one who asked that, and now he's the one who somehow did not listen to it. Friends, when I read the prophets in Kings chapter 15, listen to this. Jehoshaphat had given his word of honor. We will, we will be with thee in war. And after making such a promise, he was reluctant to withdraw his forces. Wow. He has given his word of honor to the king who did not even contribute to his prosperity. Did you get that? But he was so concerned about his face, about saving face, about his honor, that he did not even think about the honor of God. Isn't this crazy? I'm thinking, oh, stupid Jehoshaphat. And I'm thinking, wow, how many stupid moments have I had in my life? That I would rather somehow shame the name of God than to put a shame on me. Because I gave my word of honor. I don't want to disappoint people. But it's okay for us to disappoint God. It's okay for us to say no to God and to turn our backs on God. The one who gave us all the things that we do not deserve. He's it's okay for us to turn our backs on him. And all the while I thought that, that Jehoshaphat did a crazy thing, but when we look at our lives, we did a lot of things. And it's, this is one crazy, there's, this is a comedy in this, in this story here. Ahab said, now we know the prophecy. We could work around it. <laughs> you wear my robe. <laughs> you wear my robe, pretend to be the king, and I will be a common man. Friends, sometimes we think that we could hide from the Lord. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? This is just comedy. There was, this, there was this native who was praying to God, Lord, I'm walking right now here in the forest. Maybe you can see me because there's a lot of thick trees over me. <laughs> he was trying to inform God where he was. I love that native's prayer. He was so concerned about God that God might not be able to see him. And this is what we do with God. We think that God is like us. We forget that the God of the universe is a huge God. He has an all-seeing God. So they said, okay, we could, we could work around this. You just wear my robe. Friends, when God prophesied something, it will come to pass. Amen? His words are that powerful that whatever he says, it will come to pass. If he says, Jem will grow a tail, I will grow a tail at the moment. That's how powerful his word is. Amen? So we could lean on his word. We could not depend on situations. When you see situations, sometimes we decide, we make decisions based on the situation in front of us. No, make decisions based on this. What thus saith the Lord? So friends, and this is one crazy thing. So while they're fighting, verse 33, and a certain man drew a bow at venture, randomly shot a bow in the air. He did not, he's not a sharpshooter. And he says, a certain a soldier, he does not even have a name, <laughs> for adventure, shot a bow in the air. And what happened? and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his harness. He wore an arrow-proof vest, but it somehow went straight to the weakest part of his armor. Friends, that's like a missile, uh, uh, what's this, an autopilot type of, type of bow. And this is what happens, friends, with, with God. You cannot, you cannot hide from him. And make long story short, he died. Let's go back to verse 31. It came to pass when the captains and the chariots saw Jehoshaphat and they thought he was the king, they attacked him, they cornered him. And listen to this, Jehoshaphat cried out. What do you mean by crying out? He prayed. I guess he did not have time for united prayer here. 
And he cried out. He prayed. And I think there's only one word in his prayer. Help! Or three words. Oh, Lord, help! And this is one crazy thing here. And the Lord helped him. The God that he abandoned, the God that he forgot, the God that he did not acknowledge helped him right away. God did not wait like, huh, wait till you learn your lesson. I'll wait for you to bleed first. <laughs> no. The moment he cried out, God listened. Isn't our God a faithful God? Can you say amen? amen. He is a wonderful God. And most of the time, we do not see that because we are so focused on what we want to achieve that we compromise a lot of things in our lives. Listen to this. The, com the, more, the most complete and perfect system which men have ever devised, apart from the power and wisdom of God, will prove a failure. Have you noticed the ways of God, friends? The ways of God look so foolish in the eyes of men. <laughs> Remember Gideon? Gideon and his 300 fighting the number of the Milikites and Midianites. God's ways are always looking crazy in the eyes of men. When he, when he armed Gideon, what did he arm Gideon with? A pitcher, a torch, and a trumpet. They're not going for music festival, friends. Why are they using trumpet? What's that for? And there are only 300. And if you have a pitcher, how could you fight with pitcher? You are not a waiter. You're not serving juices there. This is war. And God gave them a weapon that they could not defend themselves even. Because God wants them to know that it's not the weapons that wins the battle. It's the God who's with them. Can you say amen again? Amen. Friends, listen to this. A beautiful word. The Lord can do but lot little for the children of men because they are so full of pride and vain glory. They exalt self, magnifying their own strength, learning and wisdom. It is necessary for God to disappoint their hopes and frustrate their plans that they may learn to trust in Him alone. Isn't that beautiful? It is necessary for God to what? To disappoint their hopes and frustrate their plans that they may learn to trust in Him alone. I'd like to, to remind you of the favorite quote that I read in the few days that I was here. The tenor of the Bible is to inculcate what? Distrust in human power and to encourage trust in divine power. But so often do we forget the divine power that we focus so much on what we can do. We focus so much on our skills, on our strength, that we forget, friends, that God is our strength. Amen? The moment we forget that, we're going downhill. And I love this thought that I was reading this morning. I'd like to share with you. God is a God of perfect timing. Listen to this thought. There is, this is a dangerous age for any man who has talents which can be of value in the work of God. Whoa. Are you listening? Let me read it again. This is a dangerous age for any man who has talents which can be of value to the work of God. For Satan is constantly plying his temptations upon such a person, ever trying to fill him with pride and ambition. And when God uses him, it is too often the case that he becomes independent and self-sufficient and feels capable of standing alone. Listen to the continuation of this, of this thought. It says here, a scary situation that we are in. Only a close connection with heaven will give the right tone for your, infidel and for your fidelity and will be the ground of your success. Your feeling of dependence will drive you to prayer. Amen? And when your feeling of dependence drives you to prayer, my dear friends, you're on a safe ground. When you become independent from God, you are on a very, very shaky, scary ground. Listen to this next thought. It says, if you want power, you may have it. It is waiting your draft upon it. 
It is waiting for your draft upon it. Upon it, it says here, only believe in God, take Him at His word, act by faith, and blessings will come. In this matter, genius, logic, and eloquence will not avail. Praise God, amen? I don't have all of those things. <laughs> Praise God. Even if we don't have all those things, we have God. Amen? And this is the danger when we think we have those things because we might not have a need of God. Listen to this next thought. Oh, those who have a humble, trusting, contrite heart, God accepts. And hearts and hears their prayers. And when God helps, all obstacles will be overcome. Amen? How many men of great natural abilities and high scholarships have failed when placed in positions of responsibility, while those of feebler intellect with less favorable surroundings have been wonderfully successful? The secret is the former trusted to themselves, while the latter united with him who is wonderful in counsel and mighty in working to accomplish what he will. Friends, did you know that the only king in the Bible who did not face any defeat was David in battle? He has not faced any defeat. You know why? Because every time he went to battle, before going to battle, he inquires of the Lord. He always inquires of God. He did not depend on past successes. He did not depend on past victories. He always come to the Lord and inquires of the Lord. And friends, if we inquire of God, God will hear. God will instruct. God will give His directions. And this is the problem with us, friends. We don't ask directions most of the time because we base our decision now on past successes and sometimes even worse on the successes of others huh we always calculate when we come together and meet we always look back in the past and base our actions on the past experiences this is not what God has intended I'm sorry this is not what God has intended what God intended is for us to come to him as a child not knowing where to go for he will lead can you say amen to that this is what God desires for His children to do. Because if we do that, we will never be led astray. How can you be led astray? When the God that we learned about last night is the God who's leading you. And this is the reason why that potentials sometimes could be a great danger. Intellect, acclaimed positions, diplomas, could sometimes be a hindrance, or most of the time could be a hindrance. But this is the thing as well for those who does not have experience. Because when the success is given, it's so overwhelming, isn't it? And for those, what he was talking about, what she was talking about, about the latter, who have feebler intellect, who have unfavorable surroundings, when the success is given to us, I will somehow associate myself to the latter. <laughs> Because I don't have this training, I don't have that intellect. And when a success is given, sometimes it's overwhelming. And sometimes we forget that all those things come from God. In all your ways, what? Acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. I think I still have time to share a testimony. I remember one time, I, it, was, it was the first few years. It was, I guess, the first year of, my, of me being a missionary. And friends, when you don't know what to do, you are so prayerful. <laughs> Every step of the way, Lord, please guide my hand, lead me. And, and I was flying from the Philippines to three different locations or four different locations. And, and us Filipinos, when we fly out, we need to have a return ticket. We cannot fly out if we do not have a return ticket. You know why? Because Filipinos have the ability of disappearing. <laughs> we go as a tourist. <laughs> And then we stay there. <laughs> so they require us a return ticket. So this trip, I didn't have a return ticket. And I'm thinking, Lord, what's gonna happen? The person who sponsored for my flight forgot to buy me a return ticket. 
So I was, I was really praying hard, Lord, please guide me. And while I was lining up in this, in this queue for immigration back in the Philippines, I saw somebody who's, uh, whom I'm familiar with. That person came from uh, our university. He's one of the swim coach. And I, and he's a friend of mine, and he was traveling with his family, and we're going to the same country. And he asked me, and I, I, I asked him, sir, please pray for me. And then he asked, why? Because I don't have a return ticket. I said, oh, you'll be in trouble. That's why, pray for me. So, so while they were lining up, I was behind them, and so they, it, was, it was their turn. So when they were called, I was trying to eavesdrop what is being asked. And of course, they were asked for a return ticket. I'm thinking, Lord, what am I gonna say? And then all of a sudden, before it, before it was my turn, there was this booth that opened up, and it's the special type of people, like, like officials and all. This booth opened up, and this lady gestured to me like, come, and I'm thinking, oh. So I came, now I was so nervous, and I was in front of her, and then she said, so sir, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to Malaysia. What are you gonna do there? I'll visit some friends and families, church friends and church families. And then he said, so what's your work? And I, I told her, I'm a, I'm a photographer. I did not tell her that I'm a retired photographer. And then she said, oh, so enjoy your stay. She just stamped my passport and then let me go. And I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> but when I arrived in Malaysia, friends, so when I arrived in Malaysia early in the morning, I saw people lining up. And of course, I, want, I still want to, to know what is being asked. And of course, one by one, we're asked for a return ticket. And you're not assured to go through until you pass through the immigration. So friends, my heart was pounding. And I'm, I was practicing my words. And later on, I said, good morning, ma'am. And I was saying good morning, and everything was shaking. Even my lips were trying to. <laughs> Have you had that nervous type of experience that when you smile, this one is moving as well? So I was trying to say, good morning, ma'am. And it's a good thing that she was not looking at me. And she did not even take a glance. She just opened my passport, stamped it, and gave it to me. Isn't that amazing? So I went through and said, thank you, Lord. So for my next trip, going to Indonesia, this time, the human factor came in. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna assess who's the friendlier immigration officer here. So I was trying to look, and then there was this little kid who was trying to climb, to climb that, that booth. And the, the kid said, oh, la, la, la. and then the guy laughed. I said, that's my guy. <laughs> I lined up. So while I was lining up, in front of me was a Japanese, uh, Japanese national. And you know what, Japan, if they go, to, if they go to, uh, to the US, they don't need a visa. That's how strong the country is or their passport is. He was asked for a return ticket. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, he's Japanese. He was asked for a return ticket. I'm a Filipino, I'm dead. And, and he, was, he was looking for his return ticket. It took him like two, three minutes to find his return ticket until, until he finally found it and he gave it to the guy. And friends, how my heart was pounding this time thinking, I will be sent home. And all of a sudden there was a guy from at the back of the cubicle that said, you transfer. And I'm thinking, what? And he transferred me in front of a guy who does not even smile. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll be sent home. So I passed my passport again, friends. This time, my smile was even more intense. <laughs> and, and this guy did not look at me. Same thing, stamped my passport and gave me my passport. Three times in a row. Now, fourth time, Singapore. And in Singapore, there's a lot of Filipinos in Singapore. If you took away the Filipinos and sent them home, their economy would collapse. Most of their helpers, most of the people, of the workers there are Filipinos. So that's why they're quite strict. When Filipinos go there, they have to see your return ticket just to be sure that you're coming back. So friends, I was there standing and that person just stamped my passport and go. And now I'm flying to to Bali, and I was sitting in the plane with a, with a guy, and a guy and his girlfriend, and this guy asked me the question, said, so Jem, what's your work? The moment a person asked me what's my work, it's like ding, 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 testimony time. So for the next three hours, we were sharing, I was sharing to him my testimony, and before we landed, I told him, 
hey Ian, please uh, pray for me. I said, why? I didn't even know if he's a Christian or not. I just asked him. I said, because I don't have a return ticket. I said, oh, Jem, you're dead. And he said, that's why, pray for me. Yeah, because they're quite strict here. So while we were lining up friends, and Ian was lining behind me, the immigration officer asked me this question, Mr. Castor, and I said, yes, sir. How old are you? And it was during that time, and I asked him, I told him, I'm 37, sir. I said, what? You're 37? I said, why, sir? I said, because I thought you're 27. And I said, sir, you're, you're so nice. You're my new best friend. I said, I said, ha, 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 And then he stamped my passport and let me go. <laughs> and then afterwards, afterwards, that Ian, Ian came behind me while we were waiting for the bag. I said, Jem, what did you say to that, to that guy? And I said, he was just asking for my, for my age and he could not believe that I'm 10 years younger than he expected. I said, why did you ask? I said, because he was so nice to you and he was so strict with me. Friends, that's all God, amen? amen. So those, that, that past experience just boosts my confidence to lean on the Lord. Isn't God amazing? So I was called back again to go to Bali two months later. This time, friends, still I don't have a return ticket. God always puts us in a situation to test our faith, amen? So I was, I was preparing, but this time I was confident, maybe too overly confident. And I'm, my, my, my sponsor during that time gave me a call, said, Jem, I'm so sorry, I'm not planning to, to keep you hanging, but you know what? The internet here is, is not so good. We had, we had a storm this week and it somehow destroyed some of the towers. So internet here is down. So, so please forgive us. But you have a layover in Manila before you fly to Singapore tomorrow. You have a three hour layover. I will send you the ticket while you are there. And she did that before and I'm thinking, okay, no problem. So and at the back of my mind, even there's no return ticket, I'd be okay. Friends, I reached Manila, I opened my, my laptop. Remember my laptop that fell to the ground? It gave me, it taught me a lot of patience because every time I open it, it will take like 10 minutes before it boots up. So finally it, boot, uh, it booted up and I checked my passport, uh, I checked my, uh, my inbox to see if I have ticket. Lo and behold, there's none. I'm still confident the Lord will take care. So I opened Facebook, <laughs> like some post, comment, LOL, ha ha ha. <laughs> So I just surfed along, and an hour before my flight, I checked again, still no return ticket. So I said, okay, I'd better just go up and line up and, and check in. So while I was at the check-in counter, the first question that the lady asked, this is not immigration yet, this is check-in counter. The first question that the lady asked, so uh, Mr. Castor, can I see your return ticket? And I told her, about the story, I'm sorry, I don't have return ticket because the system is down, internet is, is gone, so, and I said, but they will require you of a return ticket when you go through immigration, and they said, it's okay, miss, I always come back. Let me handle this. <laughs> Let me handle this, and I said, sir, but, but they, they are strict, and I said, miss, look at my passport, I don't overstay, I always come back, so, just give it to me and I'll handle this. So friend, I was, I was quite confident because past experience has showed me that God has been taking care of me. So I went in and I even practiced my smile. I, I was thinking like, oh, this smile is, is very enticing. <laughs> Good morning, ma'am. <laughs> Hello, how's your day? And friends, I was praying, Lord, please me, please put me, put me in, in front of a nice, gentle immigration officer. And the Lord put me, because this is, this is a, like a snake line. You cannot choose which immigration officer will you, will you pick. So the Lord put me in front of a lady. Oh, nice, ladies are nice. <laughs> Not all. <laughs> so this lady, while I was standing in front of her, the first thing that she asked, can I see your return ticket? That's the first question that she asked. And I was still like at peace and confident. And I told her, I'm sorry, I don't have a return ticket because my sponsor, blah, 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 blah. And she said, no, I need to see a return ticket. Now, my heart began to palpitate. 
And I explained to her, Mom, I'm sorry, but I don't have, but I, I have a, a continuing ticket. If I, the moment I, I arrive in Singapore, I have to fly to Bali and I, I fly to Malaysia. I said, no, I need a return ticket. So friends, when she said that, and this is like 30 minutes before the flight goes. So I went back, now I'm in panic. And, and if you see me travel before, I look, I look like a crazy gypsy, friends. I have a backpack, I have a camera bag, and two plastic bags. So I was running, I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? And then I opened my laptop. Remember, the laptop boots up at 10 minutes. So it took like another 10 minutes, and I was praying and praying, and when I opened the inbox, lo and behold, no ticket. So I was thinking, what should I do? I closed the laptop again, went back, and I'm thinking, Lord, just put me in another person's, uh, what's this, cubicle. And a new, a new immigration officer, I'll be good. So I had all those things played out in my mind. I will be let through. But friends, sometimes God has a sense of humor. Of all the immigration officers, the Lord, Lord put me on the same woman. And while I was lining up, she asked me, so do you have a, a, a return ticket? And I said, I, I still don't have. I said, why are you lining up? And I told her, ma'am, I'm a missionary. If I miss this flight, I'll miss my mission because this is a continuing flight. I said, so you're a missionary? I said, yes. All the while, I thought that she let me through. I said, talk to those people inside. Have you seen those people that are being escorted, escorted to, to the immigration office? Huh? They look like criminals, and I felt like a criminal. I was brought to the office, and I was interrogated for like five, ten minutes, and the same conclusion, I have to purchase a return ticket. So friends, they directed me to these local airlines, and they already called the airline. Someone is going there, and I was running, friends. I have like 15 minutes to go, and I have to purchase a ticket. And I was running, and while I was running, I was like Jehoshaphat, and I was crying out, Lord, help me, what should I do? And the Lord somehow convicted me with this thought, use what's in your hands. And I'm thinking, Lord, what's in my hands is not enough. The ticket cost is 5,400 5, pesos, a little more than $100. My money was only 2,000 pesos. And I'm thinking, Lord, what's in my hands is not enough. And I remembered, during the time I have a wallet that has a zipper, in between, and in that zipper, I put my tights, and my tights was 2,500. It's still not enough, but I'm thinking, Lord, could I use the tights? I'm, I'm a missionary, so some of, some of the offerings goes to, mission, to the mission field, so can I take it directly right now? And friends, the Lord didn't give me peace. When the Lord does not give you peace, it's not his idea. So I said, what should I do? And friends, I remember that I had an ATM machine, an ATM machine, not an ATM machine, an ATM card. I don't have a machine, an ATM card. And in that card, I have 3,500 pesos in there. And that's from my client for the wedding. So I said, oh, I'll, I'll do that. So I gave my passport to the guy who's, uh, who's trying to book my ticket, and I told the guy, I'll be back, I'll give the money, I'll give you my password, please book the ticket. So I ran to the ATM machine. The moment I withdraw the, the, the money, I went back to the guy, gave him the 3,500, and I looked for the 2,000, I could not find it. And I wore cargo pants before, so I have a lot of pockets to, sh to search, there's none. And friends, I was in panic, and I asked the guy, excuse me, sir, please look at, please check if there is, if there is a 2,000 that was placed inside the, inside the passport, and the guy was looking, and I said, sir, please, maybe it's there. I said, sir, it's not here, and I was in panic, and the guy said, sir, please calm down, you're making me nervous too. <laughs> my peace was gone, and my nervousness was taking over, and it's now contagious. And, the, and I was praying again, Lord, please, where is that? Because in the Philippines, if you drop your money, it's a donation. So, so I went back, opened my, my pocket, I opened my wallet, I checked in the tights compartment, in my panic, I put the 2,000 back there. So I took the 2,000, gave it to the guy, he gave me my 100 pesos change, that's like $2, and said, sir, run, they're about to close the gate. I was running, friends. It's an amazing race, and I don't like amazing race now. I was running towards, towards the gate, and before I went there, I, I passed through the immigration, and the lady said, do you have a ticket? I said, here, I said, run, run. And when I went through the, the, the x-ray, and the immigration people were saying, you have to run, they're about to close the gate. And I was running, friends. And of all the gates, the Lord put 
the last gate. It's like a 100 meter dash. Like after 50 meters, I could not do it anymore, Lord. <laughs> so the moment, friends, the moment I went through the gate, I, I was the last passenger. And then the gate closed. The door closed. And I was there, slumped in my chair, back so wet, and my throat was so dry. And I'm thinking, why did you do this to me, Lord? Why do you have to let me run all the way just to give me a ticket in the end? And then the Lord somehow gave me this beautiful verse, Isaiah 26, verse three. Do you know this verse? Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And then I realized that my mind was not fully stayed on him. My mind was stayed on my sponsor. My mind was stayed on my past experiences. And I did not even realize that my mind was stayed on the bank account that does not even belong to me. And the Lord took it all out. That I may lean fully upon him. That will keep him in perfect peace. And this is one thing I learned, friends. The Lord took it all out because he wants to give me perfect peace. Isn't God amazing? The moment I realized that, tears flow down my cheeks. Because, and I'm thinking, Lord, you did it all just to get me attention. Can I share a little more? Okay, if anything happens, blame that guy who said yes. The moment I was, I was there in Singapore, I arrived in Singapore. Friends, I was so hungry. It was one in the afternoon. I was so hungry. And have you experienced that hunger that when you see food, you almost cry? Huh? It was that bad. So I was so hungry because look at this. I was running all the way. And, and friends, the moment I, I arrived there, I said, Lord, what is happening? I'm so hungry and I only have $2 and Singapore is very expensive. So friends, while I, I was going around, while I was standing in front of this immigration officer, there is this bowl of Mentos. I'm not promoting Mentos right now. <laughs> this bowl of Mentos in front of me, and I asked the guy, excuse me, sir, can I have some? He said, sure, that's for you. And friends, I just waited for this guy to, to look to my passport and then had a handful of Mentos, put it in my pocket. So I was eating Mentos while walking, thinking, Lord, I'm at peace again. It's just so amazing. It's this walk is just you, me, and Mentos. <laughs> so I have a Mentos moment. And friends, Mentos melts in your mouth and your stomach so fast. And I got hungry. And this time, friends, I'm even tempted to ask people that they're eating, like, is that delicious? <laughs> but the Lord told us that his people will never beg, amen? So I kept on drinking and drinking water and the problem with me is I have a, I'm a small guy with a small bladder so I always go to the bathroom. And this is a problem because the pre-departure gate in Singapore, you have to pass through, you have to pass through the x-ray and there's no bathroom inside the pre-departure gate. You have to get out of that, uh, of that room and, and use the bathroom outside. So I kept on going back to the bathroom like five times and these people are already looking at me suspiciously. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, I might be detained here because of my bathroom, bathroom breaks. So I stopped drinking water and I was so hungry. And my flight was four and it will arrive in, in Bali at, at seven. And all I could think about is food, food, food. And I've even rehearsed to ask this question to my friends. Are we eating somewhere? Or do you have food there with you? Friends, I w my peace was gone. The peace that God has given me was gone, right there. So friends, I was, I'm thinking, okay, I'll just wait till I, till I sit in, in, that, uh, in that airplane and then I'll continue drinking water. So I was there in the airplane and I kept on drinking water, kept going to the bathroom and the worst case scenario happened. Food cart came out. And the smell of the food cart is just torturous. It's so delicious. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, a horrible thought came over me. What if the people on this, other, on this other aisle seat will order food? This is gonna be a torture. And I'm thinking, Lord, please. And it was, I was almost crying. 
And friends, and this lady was so slow, and I even prayed, Lord, please send an angel to push this lady off. <laughs> so I was just so in pain. And then this lady stopped. My horrible nightmare came to pass. This lady stopped and, and asked the person, oh, is this you, sir? You have a pre-ordered meal? And the lady gave that person a meal. And a horrible thought hit me. What if my seatmate ordered food? It will just break my heart. And all of a sudden, friends, it's like, it's like slow motion. The lady turned his, her head. <laughs> and then she asked this question, Mr. Castor? And I said, yes. <laughs> and then she said, vegetarian fly lies? <laughs> vegetarian fried rice. <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> friends, I did not know that my sponsor pre-ordered a meal for me. <laughs> So my hands were shaking. I was opening the retractable table and I put, and she put the, the vegetarian fried rice in front of me. My hands were shaking down below. And when I opened, when I opened this, uh, the lead, friends, it smells so good. It's as if I heard angels saying, hallelujah. <laughs> and when I tasted the fried rice, this was the spiciest fried rice that I've ever tasted. I could not take spicy, friends. But I did not care. I was so hungry. I finished it all up. And then somehow while I was full, the Lord reminded me, haven't you forgotten what I have done to you? Just a few hours ago, I just lost my peace because I did not acknowledge God. I just lost my peace because I forgot that it was all him who did all those things. It wasn't me. Friends, the moment we arrived in, in Bali, my friends brought me, I did not have to ask them, my friends brought me to this vegetarian restaurant. I had two smoothies there. I had the best meal. And God is somehow just making that statement, I have not forgotten your need. Friends, we could not lean on anything else except Him. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Do not depend on your strength. Do not depend on your intellect. Do not depend on your training. Depend on Him, and you'll never lose your way. There's this beautiful thought here that I'd like to leave with you. It's, it's one thought that I was really moved with from Faith in Works, page 45, paragraph 3. When God lets man have his own way, it is the darkest hour of his life. When God lets man have his own way, it is the darkest hour of his life. Friends, let us always remember, for without me, he can do nothing. Can we look for a partner? And let's spend just two minutes, just two minutes asking God to forgive us for all the ways that we have chosen to depend on ourselves, depend on others, but not on Him. Let's, let's bow. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way, thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am waiting, yielded 